Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about getting into competitive play for Counter-Strike CSGO. This is probably one of the most challenging game modes in any shooter ever. The skill gap here is extremely high and you're going to be running into some very good players and it can be one of the most unforgiving game experiences, especially if you have no idea what you're doing when you first get into it. And although I'm not a particularly great player, I can hopefully give you some tips that will ease your introduction to the competitive gaming scene and make it a little little less painful for the newcomers. And in case you missed my video on hitting rank 3, you might want to check that out before watching this since you have to have rank 3 before you can even partake in the competitive scene. And once you hit rank 3 and start playing competitively, you can only win two competitive matches per day and then it basically locks your account from playing any more comp matches until the next day. And this basically prevents people from creating smurf accounts quickly and from hackers getting back into the game and ruining comp play. Uh, so it's basically just the deterrent. Once you've gotten past all of these introduction processes, then your account basically gets unlocked once you have 10 competitive wins. And after that, it'll give you a competitive rank that will basically place you when you do matchmaking for comp play. And this is going to be based on how well you did in your matches leading up to those 10 competitive wins. Now, before you even start, I would recommend getting a microphone. You're going to need some way to communicate with your teammates quickly. And if you can't do that, it's really not worth pursuing competitive play because if you can't tell your teammates where the enemies are or give good call outs you're basically just never going to make it to the higher levels of comp play and you may as well just stick to casual and tdm it's honestly not worth it without a microphone now when you first click on competitive play you can see the seven most popular comp maps and i have those checked by default right now but when you first start playing i would recommend just selecting two of the most popular maps and learning the call outs for those dust 2 and mirage are the two most popular maps in counter strike go and you're going to want to learn the call outs it might be a little overwhelming if you just jump in and try playing all the maps at the same time it's going to be a little bit difficult trying to learn all those different call outs now if you don't know the call outs on the map you can find them very easily by just doing a google image search this is the image that came out for dust 2 and then we've got mirage and inferno here and you can just study these before you play try and learn the call outs or if you have a second monitor pop this image up on your second monitor it's what i do uh, and it allows me to study the call outs in between rounds and uh, just figure out what people are talking about sometimes especially when there's a call out that's not used that frequently and you're like what the heck is that where is that on the map you can quickly glance over and see what they're talking about. Okay, now let's talk about gunplay, accuracy, and recoil control. I touched on this lightly in my rank 3 video, but uh, having played a bit more comp, I needed to go back and practice a lot more. This is the most important aspect of CSGO. Here we are in the Recoil Master map. You can download this in the Steam Workshop, and it's pretty much a necessity for improving your aim in this game. I just can't imagine getting better at this game without having this nifty little tool here. It is so freaking helpful. It'll basically help you understand the recoil of whatever weapon you're practicing with, and I would recommend focusing on the AK and the M4. Decide which M4 you want to use at the start. If you want to use the M4A1S or the M4A4, they both have pros and cons. The M4 M4A1S is what all the pros seem to be using. Jack Frags recommended that I just practice with that one instead of the 30 round magazine one, and so that's what I've been doing. I've also created a custom crosshair using the crosshair generator that you can download in the Steam Workshop, and this has helped me uh, control the recoil on both the M4 and the AK. I've made it so that the top part of the pink line there is going to be where the AK recoil ends at the top, so I, I essentially want to drag down till the top of that pink bit there is at the head level with my enemy, and if I'm using the M4A1S, then I want to drag down till the bottom part of that pink line is lined up with my enemy's head, and that'll basically basically show me where the recoil is going to end for each weapon and it really helps with learning weapon recoil. You might not need it once you get really good at the game but right now it's something that I absolutely need to rely on. Now once you've mastered your recoil in the simulation take it in game and be surprised by how amazing you do. Nailed it! 
Okay, so maybe you're not going to do as good in-game as you might think you would, but that's what Team Deathmatch is for. And although I said TDM is pretty much the worst thing ever in my Rank 3 video because it is no fun to play at all, it's great for just learning your weapon's recoil. You spawn in quickly, you run around, you practice acquiring your target and dragging down for that recoil control. It's a great way to get familiar with your weapons, and I recommend doing a TDM warm-up or two before each comp game that you play. It'll just help you get familiar with the recoil, try and stay on par, and eventually you will get it down in muscle memory. But it's going to take a while and it's not going to happen on your first couple days of playing. You're really going to have to spend some time in this game before the weapon recoil becomes second nature. You may also want to consider lowering your sensitivity. I've started to do that more and more for competitive play. Counter-Strike is a different beast than other shooters out there. You're not expected necessarily to be whipping around and looking in tons of directions all the time. If you're a good CSGO player, you generally speaking know where the enemies are going to be, and you need that lower sensitivity for precision shooting and absolute mastery of weapon recoil. Because this game does not have dual sensitivity with an aiming down sights option, you do not have the faster sensitivity for your hip fire shooting uh, and whipping around in close quarter combat. So you basically have to find something that works best for both worlds, and it's partially why a lot of Counter-Strike players have huge mouse pads because they play with low sensitivity, but if they need to whip around real quick, quickly, they need to drag their mouse very far. So uh, there's a lot to consider when picking a sensitivity in this game. Ultimately, it's whatever feels right for you. There are some Counter-Strike players that are very good with high sensitivity. Now, without question, this game is very simple on the surface, but has a huge amount of complexity to it in the meta game. The next thing I'm going to be working on is grenade throws, grenade skills, knowing where to throw grenades, when to throw grenades, what grenades to throw. That is a whole skill and knowledge in itself, and it's something that I'm going to work on later. But without question, learning accuracy, recoil control, and map callouts is probably the most important thing to learn right off the bat. And once you complete your 10 competitive match wins, you should have a pretty good understanding of the callouts for at least three or four of the most popular maps and have a basic understanding of weapon control. I don't expect anybody to come out of 10 competitive matches with pro level accuracy. That's going to take years probably to get that kind of muscle memory ingrained in you. Anyway, that kind of wraps it up for my second stage newbie tutorial here. I highly recommend those trainers that you can download in the Steam Workshop. They are going to help you out a lot for improving your reaction time, recoil control, and uh, also map callout. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.